السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Welcome back to another episode of uh, Journey with the Quran I believe it is our fourth episode and alhamdulillah I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one bi'idhnillahi ta'ala Today I'm joined with a very special guest someone who some of you may know some of you may not very popular on Instagram uh, you may have seen him with Ustad Yahya Rabi on his uh, lives where they read Quran to him and he corrects them. Uh, very uh, famous for his uh, 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 for his imitation of the Sheikh himself. I'm very happy to introduce you all to our guests for our fourth episode, Qari Zain Alam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I'm very well. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How's your studies going? How's your... Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, everything's going well. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Once again, uh, Ustaz, it's a pleasure having you on. Uh, uh, I thank you for accepting uh, my invitation uh, for coming on our channel. Barakallah, it's been a pleasure. Alhamdulillah. Ahsan Allahu ilayka, So, inshallah ta'ala, I want to get straight into it, uh, bi'idhnillah. So, inshallah ta'ala, I think it's befitting that we start with uh, our quickfire round, uh, bi'idhnillah. So uh, how the quick fire uh, works is inshallah ta'ala I'll ask you some some questions some either or questions and then some some questions like what's your favorite so and so so inshallah ta'ala we start off so tea or coffee 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 you're a coffee guy yeah alhamdulillah chicken or lamb lamb uh, mains or dessert ah dessert 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 uh, mint ice cream or vanilla ice cream? Vanilla, vanilla. Vanilla. Uh, football or another other sport? Other sport. What sport? Swimming, mashallah. Swimming, mashallah. What is your favorite ayah? My favorite ayah in the Quran. Ayah. Um, subhanallah, there's many. But if it's one, it's uh, what Allah Jalla says in Surah Al Fatih. Ya ayuha nas. Allah Jalla Ala says, Antum al fuqara ila Allah, wallahu huwa al ghani al hamid. Allah Jalla Ala says that, uh, all people, indeed, you are in dire need of Allah Jalla Ala, and He is the most praised one and the most rich. No. Yes, what is your favorite surah? Favorite surah, Surah Fatir. Favorite juz? Juz, I'd have to say, inshallah, uh, the last juz, alhamdulillah, just 30. Pastures, one that everyone enjoys. And your favorite hadith? Favorite hadith, Prophet he said, that If Allah Jalla wa Ala intends goodness for someone, He gives him the understanding of the religion. Are you a school school guy or home learning guy? School. School. Maths or English? Uh, English. English. What's your favorite color? Uh, blue. Blue. Favorite favorite culture? Culture. Yeah, I need the culture of the Arabs, inshallah. Gosh. And favorite clothing? Clothing. The clothing of the Arabs. Clothing of the Arabs, mashallah. So hopefully that uh, gave our viewers some insight into you and gave them a bit more broader understanding of you yourself. But inshallah ta'ala, I want to go into your Quran journey as this, as that is um, what this is about. So if you could tell us where and where, uh, when you were born. Inshallah, I was born in uh, London and I was born in 2005, inshallah. 2005. So where and when did you be begin your journey in uh, learning not just Quran but Islam? Okay. Uh, I first started learning the Quran uh, at the age of around five or six. Alhamdulillah, when you grow up in a religious household, especially from the, where I'm from, they push you at a young age to, to learn Quran, memorize it. And Dani also the Deen. So Alhamdulillah from a young age I started going to Madrasa, learning from a teacher, uh yani basics of you know how to read Quran and also learning the Deen of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So you you were born in London. What was the atmosphere around there? Was it hard for you to learn learn the religion? Alhamdulillah. London, Alhamdulillah has been has been good learning the Quran. There's a, and Islam as well, there's a lot of especially in London. There are, alhamdulillah, a lot of uh, good places to find ilm, alhamdulillah. 
Alhamdulillah, because some people, unfortunately, they say that we're living in a Western country and we want to go abroad to learn. And we can't, we can't learn simply in this country. But uh, the, the true fact is that that's not true. That uh, even okay. in Western countries, uh, you are able to, to learn if you really put your heart and mind uh, to it. And you're a prime example of that, mashallah, tabarakallah. So now let's get into the Quran itself. Your first teacher, often people, uh, you talk to them, say, oh, I've the first, the qa'i that I learned with my father or my mother. And by far, they play the biggest role uh, in learning the Qur'an. So where where exactly in terms of Arabic and the Qur'an did you start? <clears throat> I started with a separate teacher from Madrasa. Alhamdulillah, that my parents pushed me into uh, yani going to a Madrasa. And yani, there were, there's one specific teacher. Sheikh Abdullah, who studied in Egypt, mashallah, and he is the one that first yani, inspired me to start memorizing the Quran and learning the science of the Quran. And uh, alhamdulillah, through that, yani, inshallah, my parents got sadaqa jari for that. Yani, them pushing me to go to this madrasa, alhamdulillah, it, bifadlillah ta'ala, yani, qadrullah, I bumped into this teacher, and I had him after many other teachers who yani, weren't as good, but this one, alhamdulillah, that I had. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen that uh, he inspired me to learn the Qur'an and to yani, push myself in memorizing the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So you'd say he's the main, the main, uh, the thing that ignited uh, your journey uh, in learning uh, the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah. So with him, I, uh, you started either uh, learning the Qur'an or Qa'idah. Qa'idah I learned uh, yani, a few years before that. But when I started learning, memorizing the Qur'an properly, it was through him. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So how how was that journey? How how did you find it? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Very good. Uh, obviously, still I am learning the Quran and the science is behind it. Alhamdulillah. But uh, Alhamdulillah, yes, it's good. Alhamdulillah. So um, your teachers, uh, you just mentioned Sheikh Abdullah. Um, he's the main one you stood at. But was there any others that maybe you had another connection with, or is it just him? Uh, for, uh, يعني, I had two others There's one I still currently study with One of them is from Mecca uh, Ustad Uthman Who uh, really pushed me Into يعني, studying Tajweed And all the rules of Tajweed يعني, uh, he, he was the one that really Molded me with the Quran With proper proper Tajweed alhamdulillah. And then uh, he is the one that I uh, يعني, the most, One of the most recent teachers alhamdulillah. And then currently I'm studying uh, from a sheikh uh, from Medina, alhamdulillah, who is uh, obviously uh, every day, alhamdulillah, teaching me tajweed and whatnot, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How, how was learning tajweed? Because some people find it really difficult, difficult and makharj especially. Alhamdulillah, tajweed has been uh, very good, alhamdulillah. Uh, every person is different, صح? Uh, but I feel like that tajweed is one of the most interesting sciences. And it's a science that is very, very important. Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, he said, Al-Mahiru fi al-Qur'an ma'a s-safarat al-kiram al-barara wal-lazhi yaqar al-Qur'an wa huwa yata-ta-ta' fihi lahu ajran. That the one who recites the Qur'an proficiently, then he is in the ranks of the angels. But the one who recites the Qur'an and he stumbles and he stutters, for him is ajran, two rewards. But no doubt the one who is in the ranks of the angels is better than two rewards. So this is what يعني, pushes me to recite the Qur'an and يعني, with tajweed and so on, alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. So some people find that difficult, but alhamdulillah, you, you went through it. But was there anything else that made you, you know, think that, oh, I can't do this anymore, like to, to give up, subhanallah? Nah, subhanallah, once uh, I remember I, um, with my teacher from Mecca, after I learned a few rules of tajweed, I was thinking, okay, mashallah, I know tajweed. So I was thinking, okay, I know Tajweed. I now start reciting in a nice tone. So when I started reciting in a nice tone, my sheikh said, he sent me a voice note and he said, what on earth are you doing with your life? Yeah, and you're reciting a tone before you used to do Husriya, why are you changing to your tone? Your Tajweed has gone back to square one. So from then on, subhanAllah, I started reciting Quran, just Husriya. So then I, was, I felt like, oh, subhanAllah, so what's the point? And then uh, obviously he encouraged me, yani, don't stop. Your tone will come afterwards. Just recite, keep learning with Tajweed and Quran. And Alhamdulillah, thank him that uh, now, Alhamdulillah, I can recite uh, with the tone and with uh, Tajweed. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So you're, you, you're used to that Mujawad, mashallah, tabarakallah. Uh, could, you, could you maybe give us some Mujawad, inshallah? 
طيب أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقدمنا إلى ما عملوا من عمل فجعلنا فجعلناه هباء منثورا أصحاب الجنة يومئذ خير مستقرا خير مستقرا وأحسن مقيلا ويوم تشقق السماء بالغمام ونزل الملائكة تنزيلا الملك يومئذ الحق للرحمن كان يوما على الكافرين عسيرا ما شاء الله تبارك الله الله يحفظك we ask Allah سبحانه that he allows you to use your voice to call many to the religion of Islam and to put it on your mizan of hasanat and we ask Allah سبحانه that he gives us all a beautiful voice just like yours Allahumma ameen Allah yahfadak So MashaAllah Tabarakallah you're quite young Alhamdulillah and especially here uh, in the UK or uh, more broadly in London uh, Alhamdulillah parents especially Asian parents they're quite keen on you as well as studying the religion on your secular studies because uh, of course um, they're very pas- passionate about that. What was your experience uh, in this? Uh, Subhanallah, um, of course Alhamdulillah my parents uh, pushed me, um, especially my GCSEs to uh, study a lot. Alhamdulillah, you know, obviously that's what all parents do, study, especially secular studies. But obviously they reminded me to not forget the Quran. Yani if I do uh, Obviously, they pushed me a lot, but I remember my mother saying that, Allah hafad her, that, يعني, where's your Qur'an? How come you're not reciting Qur'an? I was like, subhanAllah, oh, of all of this, I forgot, the, I forgot the Qur'an. So, alhamdulillah, they pushed me to um, to do balance both, alhamdulillah. Secular studies and يعني, memorize the Qur'an, revise, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So how should one actually go about balancing these two? Because sometimes it can get quite difficult. You know, you get homework from school, then you're revising for exams, and then you also have your Quran lessons, Tajweed lessons, and so on. How do you balance the two? Subhanallah, I believe everyone has the time for it. But no doubt they have the time. No one is extremely busy to the point they don't even have one hour of their day to just revise the Quran or memorize it. They do. Yani, no matter how much work they get from school, how much homework they do, they can do that. Yani, for example, they leave one day of a week to do all their work. That's that's fine. The rest of the days of the week they're free. Or even if they were to just work two, three hours a day of just school work, they still have the night and after Salat al-Fajr to still open the Mus'haf. Yani, there's no excuse. The, the, everyone does have time. They just have to find it within themselves and be able to balance secular studies and also the Quran. Alhamdulillah. A question that I should have asked in the quick fire, but I want to. I was wondering, what was your hardest juz learning, or even surah to learn? Surah Nisa. Surah Nisa, um, the um, the inheritance surah. Is that is that the one? No. Yes. No. Yes. It's, it's difficult. That one is. Alhamdulillah. So everyone has uh, different ways of learning the Quran. Some would repeat an ayah, then go back to the other, then repeat and go on. What was your method uh, of learning, uh, actually memorizing? But my method when I memorize the Quran is that uh, no doubt that the ulama they say it's repetition. You need repetition. You need to repeat the ayah over and over again. All that you want stick in your memory. Yani you open the mushaf. You recite, for example, for example, the first line or the first ayah on the page. I do it line by line. People do ayah by ayah. I prefer line by line. It makes it easier. So what I do is the first line on the page. I look over it first. And then I recite that as many times as I can remember it. And then I close my eyes. And then I recite that line five times. And then I move to the next line. And then I do the same thing. Repeat it until I, until I know it. I close my eyes. And then I say... 
both those lines together now five times. And by doing this, it builds up, builds up. Because by the end of the page, if you don't do that, you're going to forget everything you just memorized on that first page. So it's important that you build up. And then inshallah, this is what makes your, your hefty, your memory strong when memorizing the Quran. Yeah, re- repetition is a, a very important thing. And actually, even after you finish learning the Quran, to carry on repeating it uh, is a, a method of uh, revision and something that if one doesn't do, uh, it will, it will, uh, it will go uh, away from uh, from our brains. Uh, so revision, apart from you know repeating it, like in your spare time, going to work, going to your studies. What other methods or what tips do you have for those who are trying to revise the Quran? Trying to revise the Quran, one of the best methods that I find, and all of the, the people, if you ask uh, the people of the Quran, the people who spend so much time with the Quran, how do they re- revise the Quran? For example, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rashid al Sufi, al Sufi, he said the way that he learned that he learned the Quran first is that his father used to make him go to circles of knowledge where the, these people used to recite the Quran, and he just used to listen. By the end, he knew the Quran just by listening. So I feel like it's important that a person, if he's not able to, doesn't have the time all the time to sit down with the mushaf and repeat, then whilst he's doing things, listen to the Quran. Because no doubt that when you come to it, you will see that you've memorized it. Listening is a very important يعني, way of learning the Quran and revising. So naam, that's a very important method, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. So Asad, learning the Quran is one thing, but understanding the meaning the 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 uh, interpretations what how should one go about learning that and you know arabic knowing arabic is an important part so what role does knowing the arabic language play subhanallah knowing arabic is very important to the point that some of the ulama and some of the salaf they said that a person who does not even know arabic cannot even call himself a talib al-ilm a student of knowledge because the, the the religion of Allah Jalla wa'ala is Arabic. It was revealed in Arabic. So it's important for you, first of all, to understand the Quran. And understand the Quran is one part. And you understand the meaning when you're reciting it in Salah and whatnot. You need Arabic. Arabic is a miftah to ilm. It's a key to knowledge. So if you're able to learn Arabic, like that's the first step you could do, is you learn Arabic and then you're able to understand what you're reciting in Salah and have khushu' and whatnot. But after that, what you must do is you must understand the tafsir behind the surah, the surah because just re- reading it, some ayahs are not as clear as others. The tafsir uh, goes into depth of the Qur'an and that's something a real talab al-ilm should spend their time with is going into the book of Allah Jalla wa'ala and spending their time, obviously as long as they have the Arabic language then they can look into the books of tafsir and actually understand what Allah Jalla wa'ala is saying because there's a lot you can take out that you can't see just by looking at the meaning of the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah. There are many virtues that come with learning the Qur'an. And Masha Tabarakallah, I must say you are very well spoken. Masha Tabarakallah, you're very flowing. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I don't know how you do it, but uh, we ask Allah Subhanahu wa that he gives us all uh, that ability to really communicate with each other in a way that, you know, not everyone can do. It's a, really a blessing from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are some of the virtues that come with learning and memorizing the Quran? The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said, Qiyamah, the people, the Sahib al Quran, the people who recite the Quran a lot and with the its companions, the ones who memorize the Quran as well, it will be said to them, recite and rise. Recite and recite how you used to recite كما كنت ترتل في الدنيا How you used to recite in the dunya And indeed your rank in general will be by the last ayah you recite And some of the sahaba they say in the ulama That the ranks in Jannah are the amount of ayahs in the Quran These are how many ranks are in Jannah So if you become a half of the Quran There's one يعني, benefit you can take from it If you are half of the Quran You memorize the Quran Then inshallah your rank in Jannah will be of the highest of ranks In Fiddaws al-A'la so that should encourage people to learn the Qur'an, to study it, to memorize it. Because what, what great benefit can you get except you know, having the highest part of Jannah? So that's the only one thing that, alhamdulillah, should inspire everyone to learn the Qur'an. Yeah. 
Alhamdulillah, and I remind everyone of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he said Khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'ana wa'allama The best of you is the one who learns the Qur'an and then he teaches it So you've learned the Qur'an, mashallah, tabarakallah what's, what's the next step? Are you teaching currently? Yes, alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah um, So um, how do you find teaching? Is it a whole different game uh, to rather than learning the Qur'an? SubhanAllah, well, I feel like obviously I am uh, not exactly half of it because I only have a few edges left, alhamdulillah. Inshallah, alhamdulillah. I should complete uh, uh, in a few weeks, inshallah. But um, Allah will make it easy for me. Um, but what I find that is that teaching the Quran, I've learned much more in teaching than actually being a student. There's many benefits you can take out from teaching. And yeah, one of the things, obviously, that everyone knows that when you teach anything, that the subject that you're teaching in becomes stronger. A Quran teacher, a teacher of fiqh, or even a school teacher. Whatever subject they're teaching in, the knowledge becomes stronger. Why? Because that part you have to revise before you teach it. And obviously you're repeating it many times. But from me, yani when I'm teaching students, when they when they when you give them an answer, it's like subhanAllah, when I was a student, I've never thought this way. There's many benefits you take out from teaching students, alhamdulillah. So I thank Allah Jalla wa'ala that he made it easy for me to, alhamdulillah, teach people the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, it's, a, it's a really a big, it's something that's a, a great weight on one's shoulders. Actually to take the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then give it to others. Uh, so it's, it's a big ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That he, he allows us to all to all go through this And to 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 teach uh, the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ustaz um, Inshallah ta'ala One final um, uh, uh, Thing that I want you to maybe uh, Ponder upon Or tell us is if you can, inshallah ta'ala, give some advice for someone who's not yet started the journey in learning the Qur'an, learning Islam, but there's a slight chance that maybe if they had some th- words of encouragement that they start uh, learning the Qur'an. The Qur'an is kalam Allah Jalla wa'ala. It is the speech of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And obviously memorizing the Qur'an, it is not far, it's not obligatory on every single person. But no doubt it is something that is highly recommended And it is something that is very يعني, rewarded And it is something, it is an act of worship that يعني, Will bring you in high status uh, in, يعني, in the eyes of Allah Jalla wa'ala لماذا? The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam He said that Allah Jalla wa'ala has people amongst mankind The word he used, the word ahl The word ahl means, linguistically means family the companions were confused. How does Allah Jalla wa'ala have family? So the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, man whom? Who are these people? The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam replied and he said, Qalhum ahlul, ahl, ahlul Qur'an, ahlullahi wa khasatu, wa khasatu. That these people of Allah, they are the people of the Qur'an. They are ahlullah, they are the people of Allah wa khasatu and his elite ones. And being a person of the Qur'an, you memorizing the Qur'an, spending time with the Qur'an, and then acting upon what Allah Jalla wa'ala says, this insha'Allah makes you from the people of the Qur'an. And if you are the people of the Qur'an, you are amongst the people of Allah. We ask Allah Jalla wa'ala to make us from the people of the Qur'an. It is a great virtue, great ni'mah that a person can do. And uh, what the ulama they say as well, that a person who wants to seek knowledge, yani, to do fiqh, sharia, all these things, he wants to seek knowledge. That before the first step to seeking knowledge is memorizing the Qur'an. So if you want to go and be an alim, you want to be a scholar, or even a student of knowledge, what you should do first is, you shouldn't go to the books of men first, or you shouldn't go to the book of uh, the, uh, the statements of the Prophet ﷺ. First, you go through the words of Allah Jalla wa'ala, you memorize his words, and you study it, and then you go into the books of the, uh, and you go into the hadith, and the books of the scholars and whatnot. So it's important that you memorize the Quran, because there are great benefits, as I mentioned as well. The one who memorized the Quran, inshallah, they'll be in the highest ranks on Yom Al-Qiyamah. So it's a great act of worship. And obviously in order for you to memorize the Quran, you need to have ikhlas with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to have sincerity because memorizing the Quran, it's an act of worship. It's an act of worship. And if you do not 
يعني your act of worship and you do not have ikhlas, you don't have sincerity, you're not doing this, um, this act of worship for Allah Jalla wa'ala, then it to be rejected from you. So it's important that whatever act of worship you do, especially memorizing the Quran, it's not for the sake of showing off to people, it's rather to gain the pleasure of Allah Jalla wa'ala. The ulama, rahimahullah, they said that a person can have many intentions, some that are good, some that are bad, the good intentions, obviously, uh, obviously for the sake of Allah Jalla wa'ala, but the ulama, they say the loftiest intention a person can have when they are doing an act of worship is to gain the pleasure of Allah Jalla wa'ala. So if you memorize the Quran to gain the pleasure of Allah Jalla wa'ala, inshallah, this is, this is what you'll get. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And brothers and sisters, those who have learned the Quran, I remind you, that the Qur'an it is not something that we use to beautify ourselves or to show that we have beautiful voices or to just keep it in our back locker but rather it is to please Allah subhanahu as he as Ustad mentioned it is a it is a form of worship towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Qur'an it was it will either be a test it will either testify for you it will testify against you so be from those who they learn the quran they contemplate upon the quran they act upon the quran and inshallah ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will gather us all in jannatul firdaus al-a'la innahu wali dhalika wal qadiru alayh ustaz it's been a pleasure talking with you and i'm sure we could have uh, we could have uh, we could have spoke for much longer there was loads of other stuff that i wanted to talk about uh, yani your imitations mashallah tabarakallah point and how you do that and so much others but um, time is limited uh, I need to go and I'm sure uh, you need to you need to go as well but honestly it's been a pleasure having you on Jazakallah Khair for accepting my invitation okay. and we hope to have you on our, on my channel again inshallah ta'ala in the near future okay. bi-ithnillah Allah barakallah feek Jazakallah Khair ya Adil it's been a great pleasure Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Allah Jalla Allah reward you and uh, make you from the pure of Quran Ameen I mean, Ahsan Allahu ilayk wa fatah Allah alayk. Just one request, inshallah ta'ala. Can you recite for us one more time, bi'idhni Allah? Taib, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillahi al-Rahman al-Rahim. مهطعين مقنعين رؤوسهم لا يرتد إليهم لا يرتد إليهم طرفهم وأفئدتهم هواء وأنذر الناس يوم يأتيهم العذاب فيقول فيقول الذين ظلموا ربنا أخذنا إلى أجل قريب نجب دعوتك ونتبع الرسول أولم تكونوا أقسمتم من قبل ما لكم من زوال وسكنتم في مساكن الذين ظلموا أنفسهم فتبين لكم كيف فعلنا بهم وضربنا لكم الأمثال وقد مكروا مكرهم وقد مكروا مكرهم وعند الله مكرهم وإن كان مكرهم لتزول منه الجبال لا تحسبن الله مخلف وعده رسله إن الله عزيز ذو انتقام يوم تبدل الأرض غير الأرض والسماوات وبرزوا لله الواحد القهار وترى المجرمين يومئذ مقرنين في الأصفاد سرابيلهم من قطران وتغشى وجوههم النار ليجزي الله كل نفس ما كسبت إن الله سريع الحساب 
هذا بلاغ للناس ولينذروا به ينذروا به وليعلموا أنما هو إله واحد وليذكر أولو الألباب ما شاء الله تبارك الله There you go brothers and sisters to end it off some recitation from the last few verses of Surah Ibrahim Ustaz uh, once again Jazakumullah khair. And we ask Allah subhanahu that inshallah ta'ala he puts this on your mizan of hasanat and makes it a means for uh, for us to inshallah ta'ala meet in the future bi'ithnillah in this world fi dunya wal akhirah. So brothers and sisters jazakumullah khair for watching and I hope to inshallah ta'ala see you in the next episode bi'ithnillah ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.